Dr. Thomas Manton, the fourth success keywords, realization, expectation, manifestation. The Lord spoke several words to me that, that go with the laws of success, the order of success, uh, a little few moments ago. And I'm going to say some other words in here, but I didn't want to make the title too long. So those three kind of cover a lot. Realization, number one. First of all, Joshua 1, 8 says, meditate in the word. God's principles and laws. And you'll have the desires of your heart. <clears throat> By what? By walking in prosperity. You'll make your way prosperous and you'll have good success. And there'll be the realization of desire. Desire is a very strong word. I may have to add it to this title. I don't know. Desire, desire. What do you want? I know what I want. A lot of things I want. And when you want them enough and have enough realization of, of all of that and then expectation by faith toward God, he, you know, they're going to give way and come to you. I got to say something, go real far out on the edge. The Lord will have you consider everything else as a loss and a waste when it compares with what your real dream is. And that's a hard thing, man. That's not an easy thing. You know? Uh, as you go along in life, you think so many things are important and valid. But when you get on a bit, you, you, you say, you know what? None of it is. Except the thing that... Except the things that I must have. That's it. I think when you get there, something connects heaven and earth and something begins to break loose. Saw so this guy, a real funny guy. In fact, he's Chinese. He's a businessman. He used to write me. <laughs> he used to write me saying bad words because he had this slogan when he was coming up. But now he's, he, he's big in the world. He's worth a, a few hundred million dollars, you know. He really kicked it through. But he said something, that crazy guy, but very amusing and very rich now. He said... Um, key ingredient for success, I shouldn't even quote him, I should just say this for myself, because I've said this before, but I like when it, when it gets confirmed, even by these guys in the secular arena, you know, that just make you laugh, you know, they're not coming from, they're not preaching in no pulpit, you know, they're, they're on the world stage, okay, and the social medias and all that, emails and marketing, all kinds of stuff, and, um, he said the key ingredient for manifestation of success is this, hunger. That's another key word. Are you hungry for it? Sometimes people can deal with their pain a little bit. You know, like the, the old story of the animal who had a wound, uh, or like cactus spikes or, or needles or whatever in his, in his leg, and he just rolled over on it and went, mm, he's in pain. But he wouldn't like find a way to remove them. He just lay there with it. As long as you can lay there in your situation and not get up and cause a radical movement to go and cause change, you're going to stay just where you are. And guess, guess who will leave you there? The big boss. <clears throat> God does what you do. He gets involved with what you do. He's like a mirror. I used to preach this years ago in the realm of revival, like consecration, all he said, to the pure, he'll show himself pure, to the froward or the profane or the, you know, carnal or wicked in a bad way. Uh, some carnality is good because you live in the human body and you have to do certain things, you know. But I mean, you got to eat food, you got to take care of yourself, you have to exercise. You know, there's a, a few, there's several good things. The realm of the carne, the carnal, but carnally minded meaning worldly, earthly, sinful, you know, that kind of thing. So if you're in that realm, he'll show himself to you like froward. What do you say? Pure and froward. Froward, what does it mean? That's a King James word. To the pure, he shows himself pure. So God can act as a mirror. What's that scripture? Is in 2 Corinthians 3.18. 1 
First Corinthians 3.18 or second, I don't remember. Can't look it up right now. Wish someone could look that up for me. We behold the image of the glory of the Lord. It's like a mirror. The image of the glory of the Lord. How much glory you want. I've been speaking about that. The glory of God. Walking in your high calling that makes the anointing come to you. You know. It makes God touch you. you. Are you hungry for the Holy Spirit? You should be because he has all the answers of everything you need and want. Everything's in him. All wealth, all treasure, all brilliance, all desire, all success in every conceivable way. God has everything. He made everything. He has everything. But things are not going to catapult big for you until you get hungry for it. Realization. Yeah, everybody's writing me. Thank you for the word about the prophecy for the nation. Yeah, I get it. Thank you, my dear brother. I'll write you back later. <sighs> One of my partners. Standing in the gap. Well, I like this guy. In fact, I'm saying it in a funny way, but I should. I, really, he's a good guy. Boy, he's writing a good message. Should I read what he said? He's a partner of the ministry. He really got promoted in his company. He got, became a manager, a highly paid manager, after I prayed for him. Good evening, Prophet Thomas Manton. Glad to hear from you. I think I clicked him a little note because I, I saw his number. I just wanted to. Thank you for your word a few years back concerning now President Ruto and the wisdom of God, the wisdom that God was going to give him. That's true. I prophesied that. It's a, it was a big prophecy. That was a big one. They all are, but that was a, that was a key one. Also, thank you for standing in the gap for Kenya. You are truly God's most accurate mouthpiece. All your prophecies always come to pass 100%. Hosanna to the King. Hallelujah. That's a nice testimony, isn't it? Thank you, my dear brother. Just on time. I could read it to everybody. So, um... The Lord is amazing. Somebody just sent me a, an offering, a pastor lady, also saying her appreciation for my prayers for the nation of Kenya. She's from Kenya. Yeah, thank you. Second Corinthians 3.18. Thank you, Rose. Good to see you there. Thank you very much. The Lord is... Um, The last few broadcasts, I've not been interacting, like saying like, hi, 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 there you are. Because it, it, I'm in such a run, I mean, I'm, I'm having a very busy week and I'm trying to really just, but I still have the comments on, but sometimes they're off the screen and I don't even see who's writing. So please, please know that. I, but I realize you're there and I see you there. God bless you for being on with me. I really, really value you and I appreciate you very much. So... Realization is an act of becoming fully aware of something as a fact. Come on, forget the fact part. It just is, it is or it isn't, it is. The act of becoming fully aware of something, your desire, what you want, what you need. Hmm? Another definition is is the achievement of something desired or anticipated. Anticipated takes me to the next word. Expectation. All right, I'm going to go fast. I usually read a lot of... Uh, well, let me do something first. See if I can get a couple of uh, other words that roll with... Uh, uh, help me, come on. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Okay, awareness, understanding, comprehension, consciousness, apprehension of, cognizance of, for the fulfillment of, the achievement of, the the second, first definition, some other words for realization are, is awareness, understanding, comprehension, consciousness, apprehension, cognizance, meaning being really aware and appreh apprehension, apprehension, 
wanting to seize it, wanting to have it, consciousness of it. Are you so conscious of what you want and need and desire that you just can't live without it? Why you feel really like frustrated? Nobody knows what real big people go through, you know, to achieve the desires they have. But, you know, you can't complain, you just have to do it. But anybody can lose and stay in the realm of that. But to win, and to win big, whoo, takes effort. Realization. Second part, it talks about, so the realization is the understanding of what it is you want. And then the second definition was the achievement of something that you want. Re the realization of it, it becomes reality. The word realization comes from reality. Now watch this. Fulfillment, achievement, accomplishment, attainment of something. It's not enough for you to have a dream, a vision, a desire, uh, and you didn't get it yet. That's whack. W-H-A-C-K. It is a word. Meaning not good. Remember Whitney Houston did this, uh, this the great singer. She, she was doing that stuff too, you know, but she went on the drug, Say No to Drugs campaign and did some PSAs, public service announcements on TV. Crack is whack, you know, don't, don't do crack. <laughs> and sadly, she was involved in it herself, but uh, crack is whack. It is whack, it's bad. For you to have a dream and a desire and not to have the achievement of it or the, the attainment of it, Come on, the realization, the manifestation. I'm going to get to the word manifestation. That's another keyword. Success, success keyword. You, it's not enough. It's not good. Accomplishment and attainment. I had to do that. Thank you, Jesus, for having me pause before I jump. I was going to jump so fast to the next word. Next word is expectation. Let's get it. Let's get it. Expectation is a strong belief that something will happen or be the case. Expectation. Strong belief, it starts there, that's faith. You gotta work your faith in God and keep telling God, hey, 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 speak it. I will have it, this has to happen. You have to cut through all your emotional down, you know, issues where you feel bad. You gotta break through all that garbage, all that nonsense in your emotions. It's hard sometimes. And stand up and start walking the floor and speak in faith, speak in tongues, shout aloud, say what you got to say. Tell God the devil and the universe, I'm going to have this. And it's going to manifest. God said he'd go over a million, you know, multitudes of people. It could be million, millions of people to find someone whose heart is perfect toward him. Someone standing in faith. Without faith it's impossible to please him. You must believe that he is and come to him and diligently seek him and he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him and talk to him Hebrews 11 6 faith is the substance the manifestation thing of what you desire and then the sixth verse says you believe God come to him believe that he is and that he can do all things for you and then you diligently work with that and he'll reward you and give you give you Mark eleven twenty four, again, the things you're desiring when you pray, believe you receive them and you'll have them. Yeah. Okay. Stuff all over my phone screen here. Okay. Strong belief that something will happen and it says or, but I'd say, and be the case. Some similar words is assumption. That's good. Belief, presupposition, presumption, conjecture. Uh, conjecture, I don't really know. That's like, it seems a bit iffy. Reckoning, calculation, you can calculate it. Prediction, prediction, prophesy, forecast, forecasting, projection, project it. Assurance, confidence, trust, anticipation, expectancy, eagerness, hope, excitement. Wow, that's great. The prospect, the hope, the outlook, the lookout, 
expectation. You know, faith is faith is the way you get God start to move in your direction. But expectation is like really ex expectation, declaration, speaking, prophesying, declaring, praying, working on things for the realization with realization that you're going to achieve what you want and be successful in what you're doing. That that attracts God. It attracts also the thing to come to you to help you become successful. Say amen. One more though, I have many. Manifestation. Okay, manifestation is an event, an action or object that clearly is clearly showing and embodying something. This talks about some theoretical abstract. No, nah, leave that alone. Let me go to the next one. Second definition. The action or fact of showing something. I like it. There's a state in America called Missouri, and they have their license plate, and the, the slogan of the state is the, sh the show me state. Thomas likes that because Thomas told Jesus, show me. If I could put my finger through the hole in your hand or wrist and the, in the hole in your side where they put the spear. The Lord didn't rebuke him for wanting to do that. He just said there are people that also have not seen but will believe. That's many people in the now. You can't see Jesus in the flesh, but you believe he's there, yes? And who you do experience now is the Holy Spirit, who he sent to us. Say a big amen. <sighs> okay, here we go. Man. Oh, I just had it. Oh, here we go. Okay, some other words for manifestation are display, to display it. Wow, if you display it, you have it, yes? The sign, sign of something. The manifest. Manifesto, many call it, the, the league of act, the, the plan of action. Realization, realization, revelation, you got the revelation of it. And the materialization of it. And the presentation of it. The expression of it. Epiphany. Epiphany is a word like you're having a visitation, like it's a big momentous visitation in your in your world exteriorization do you like that word materialization m a t e r i a l i s a i a t i o n materialization without the without the z i guess you could put a z there instead of an s i like the z better exteriorization Exterior. Exterior means it's outside. It's on the external. You can see it. Yeah. Why do we put up with like hope, wishing, hoping? You gotta get, you gotta get PO'd at some point. You know, that stands for something. Annoyed. Say, look here, stop this foolishness. This has to happen. And along the way, you know, the devil will really cause people to disappoint you, forget about you, disillusion you, make you feel bad. It's terrible. It's terrible. I, I, don't, I, don't know why, I don't know why that happens, but, you know, it's just, maybe it's, you know, I don't want to spiritualize those things, really, because I said that yesterday in the High Calling, Volume 3. Uh, you, you, you have to just say, you know, the devil's trying to prevent something from happening. When people don't act right in, in whatever realm, that's, a, that's the time you need to jump over into something greater and keep walking on what you're doing. I, 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 I almost cry tears thinking about lost time, lost things. Then you look back sometimes and you say, why didn't I do that differently? Why didn't I? Get on with the program. Okay, now, let me look this scripture up because I, I think I got it. I said it yesterday by faith but I really want to confirm that I was correct. I know I am. I always am right. Well, most of the time. 
Humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor in life. Well, they bring you riches and honor in good life. Proverbs 22. I want to go back to Isaiah. Uncle Isaiah, my great uncle in the prophetic glory. Come on, bro. Let's go. 45. Hurry up. Verse 11. Hurry up. Bang. Is it it? Was I right? Yes, I was. You. New King James. Hold on a second. It's 1111. I have to screenshot this. Manjo, Lando, Lesi, Tai. Right above my photo. And on the main thing, on the date here. 1111 means big money wealth. You see how I'm speaking there? I just, my eyes just looking. So you can't, can you, you can see it backwards. See 1111? You see that? You see that? 1111. A very powerful thing. Some great lady have to find that. I don't know where that file is. I have no idea. That's so, I have so many thousands of files to find it, but if I find it again, I'm going to take some more notes from what she said. She did a very deep study in the number 11 and brought it out. Now, Isaiah 45, verse 11, you see? And then 11, 12 is the next number, which means the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violence taken by force. Permits aggression and the aggressor taken by force. 11, 12 is also a powerful number. That's Matthew 11, 12, okay? That just clicked over after 11, 11 is 11, 12. PM.com.org.tv.cc, whatever you want to say. Dot net. Dot info. Dot co. Dot coke. Whatever you want to say. Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and His Maker, ask of me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the works of my hands and concerning the works of my hands, comma, you command me. I have made the earth and I have created man on it. I, my hand, stretch out the heavens and all their hosts I have commanded. I have raised them up in righteousness and I will direct all, the, all his ways. He shall build my city. Let the, ex, my, the exiles go free. Not for price or reward, which means you work for the calling and that God blesses you. But go back to the beginning of Isaiah 45, and you see the treasures were already given. See, the, the people that are walking in this were already rich, according to Isaiah 45. Number one was the anointing that came upon Cyrus. He broke open the gates, broke open things in the spirit. Number, verse two, treasures. God said, I'll give you. Verse three, hidden treasures, rich Riches from all kinds of sources that you didn't even maybe expect that, that, that will be astounding to you. And then uh, he went on to say, by this you'll know that I'm your God who calls you by your own name. So according to Isaiah 45, just the 45th chapter of Isaiah alone, the person walking in this glory down here from verse 11 to the 14th verse, whatever, is already rich. If you could take the sequence of the scripture. That's why he says, Without pri not for price or reward. In other words, you're not a hireling. You don't sell your gift. You don't sell your grace to make money. You do it because you're called. And all kinds of things will come to you. Look at this. It says, the labor of Egypt. That's the world. And the merchandise of Cush. That's people in Africa. And of the Sabaeans, men of stature, shall come over to you, and they shall be yours. I command this right now, Lord. They will walk behind you. They will come over. They'll bow down to you. They will make supplication to you and say, Surely God is in you, and there's no other besides him. There's no other God. Truly you are God, Lord, who hides yourself sometimes, but you're the Savior. All those that make, you know, idols and don't do the right thing, they'll be disgraced. But you won't if you're his. He formed the earth and made it. He made everything on the earth. He declared everything. And all this stuff, God said, concerning what I'm going to do. Um, ask me and I'll show you. And then you command me according to the works of my hands. Now. Another 11, that's Isaiah 45, 11, it starts there. Psalm 84, 11 says, 
he'll withhold no good thing from those who walk uprightly before him. My God. The word has gone out of his mouth in righteousness. Verse 23 of Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45, 23. I have sworn by myself, the Lord said, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness that shall not return void, of course. You see that also in Isaiah 55, some chapters later, 10 chapters later, Isaiah 55, 10 and 11, his word will not return void. He said, every knee will bow and every tongue shall take the oath and say, surely in the Lord I have righteousness and strength. And all others that are incensed against him will be ashamed. There it is again. I've been talking about this in Isaiah 41, 11. 41, 11. Now again in 45, 24, says those incensed against him shall be ashamed. There it is again. So don't, 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 don't mess with the program of God. Don't, don't, even, don't even think about it. There's a sign in New York City on the road, that's on the street that says, uh, don't even think of parking here. $250 fine, they tow your car away. And that car, you, you'll come out of the office building you went into or the mall or the shop or wherever you went, a uh, restaurant or wherever, and your car will not be there because those guys are vicious. In New York City, they have tow trucks, they have people that make money and do business for the city, and they go around looking for illegally parked cars, and they take the tow truck, they hook it, they yank it, they take that car to an impound lot on the west side of Manhattan there in the city. Downtown, there's a sign, $250 fine, $250. Just tell you what that is in Kenya. Money, it's about 30,000 shillings. 30,000. To get your car back. Well, you don't even pay the fine. That's the fine to the city, but then you'll pay the impound, hundreds of dollars. So maybe it'll cost you 60K, 60,000 shillings to get your car back. At least. Maybe more now. So I got to say this, like that, like that sign says, don't even think about parking here. Don't even think about messing with God and his program. Who am I talking to? Evil doers that are out there that are not listening to me right now. But the word goes and reaches them. When you have the big picture at heart and you're really walking in the ways of God and the high calling to get it all done, the Lord will help you. I'm a witness of that. He's helping me in a lot of things. More than I can say. So it starts out with realization and then expectation and then you'll come into the realm of manifestation. If you don't get it, you haven't lived yet. If you don't have it yet in realization and you're not expecting it and it's not manifested yet, you haven't really lived yet. But know this, I prophesy. I prophesy. I prophesy that God will bring you into the realm of breakthrough like you've never seen. What's about to happen now will be on the levels that we've not seen. That's why there's so much warfare. And again, I, I, I'm, I'm preaching this life and, you know, by the anointing into people through these broadcasts or whatever you want to call them, teachings, that... You, you got to be built up and you got to stay strong and you got you to believe, don't throw it away. Sometimes you feel like, what's the use? You ever feel like that? What's the use, you know? What I, what I hope to happen so quick, it seems to be taking so long, like you might say in some realm or somebody you were depending on, they didn't, they didn't follow through right. And it's very painful. It's not like a joke. You know? don't, don't, don't let anybody tell you. I wouldn't even tell you. Even things that I experienced, I wouldn't say, oh, it doesn't mean anything. It does. But screw the devil and his ugly friends into the wall with a drill. Mafia movie where they kill people and they chop them up. And, or a horror movie where they just, you know. You know what I mean? It's like that for the wicked. Let them pay for what they did. Prophet, are you a pro proponent of that? Yes. Why? Because the Bible says so. 
Did God say when the king says, hang Haman, God came down and said, oh, no, have mercy on that fool. He didn't do it. When Judas went and hung himself after the devil entered in him and he messed up so bad. Did God come down and prevent him from hanging himself? No. Is Judas in heaven? No, he can't be. You don't do the most horrific act against the Lord and his son and then d destroy people. In that day, terrorize everybody. And then even the silver, 30 pieces of silver that he got, he spilled on the ground, he ran, he hung himself in despair like a fool and just died. What a, is that the last act before entering heaven? Rising on the cloud, the angels taking you up and going, ooh. That was the last act before, like, going up on the cloud, you know. Are you kidding me? Look at Saul. It's so bad for Saul. The Lord said to him, why, through the prophet Samuel, why did you do this when the Lord said do this and you didn't do it? I don't know why God took that instruction that seriously. I don't know why. But he took real offense that Saul didn't obey him. And then the script, now if the scripture didn't say so, we couldn't surmise. Please understand that. I'm not conjecture here. The prophet looked down and in a vision saw Saul down there with the witch of Endor below. Where's the witch? In heaven? Is the witch in heaven? Was the witch of Endor in heaven? Was that heaven? With the saints. A symbolic expression, and mani real, a manifested expression of the devil. Uh, come on now. But this is the day of reckoning. I could, I could talk, you know, I, could, I have so much revelation on all the doctrines of the Bible. I, you, you know I do, I, I, and I can teach, I, and I will in future days, I'll, I'll share so much. To really pour into people that they have the, quite, the correct understanding of doctrine, of the kingdom, the real one, the real doctrine, from the Bible. Not from opinion or desire of man or what a man thinks about something. Or they say they have a revelation. No private interpretation. The scriptures of, it's a free flow. Everybody's supposed to understand it. But you're supposed to know it. And, and men of God are supposed to teach it. Say a big amen. So I could share so much on these things. But because I've read it all through the Bible, and it's gotten into me, I have an understanding that this is the way God works. You can't mercy off everything. You can't say, can't they repent? What about God's mercy? You know how many people say that? And I've said this before, when you do that continuously, what you do is you shoo, 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 go away, God. Don't come and do anything violent. Don't come, don't do anything. Don't reckon with anybody that's evil, that's destroying movements and, and, and souls are being lost and people are dying in abject poverty because they never got taught the laws of prosperity because the, the networks of churches that were supposed to be birthed and born and flourishing got stopped by evildoers. I'm telling you something. Not everything that's supposed to happen has happened. Not at all. If you think the church is the way it's supposed to be because you see a few guys now, maybe there's a few guys around praying or having their prayer meetings or whatever. Is it all about them and their gathering? I don't even, I don't even, I don't even go to those things. I don't. My hair's so long, it just tickled my wrist down here and it scared me. I thought I was getting a mosquito. Look, see that? This is really funny. See, my, it goes all the way down. You see how far it goes down? All the way down. Whew! Look at this. So I, I, it just went all the way down here. My hand was here and it just went like that. <laughs> Can you see that? It went like that. I was like, whoa, what was that? It made me jump like, hey, it's my hair. I've just let it grow. I don't know what to say. You know, it's just like that. It's, it's a phenomenon. It's a phenomenon. It's very all right. It's very all right. We love it. Everybody loves it. And if by chance someone doesn't, take care of yourself. If you don't have any, it's my, it's my glory from God. What a gift. 
many can't have it, but I, but God gave it to me. Hey, I celebrate that. I celebrate it. But if you think you have to cut it like this, you know, all the way up and never have it, you'd never know. You'd never see, you'd, you know, you'd never know. So let it grow, let it grow, let it grow, let it grow. It just, I, I have done it. It's a step of faith. That's a really, it's a bold thing to do that. Look at that. Sometimes I look, I see how long it is. I'm like, wow. Wow. How did that happen? How did I do that? Anyway. To glory to God forever for his great gifts. Hallelujah. So, so many preachers and ministries are yet to be born in great ways and flourish in great ways. Can you imagine having a, a wave of, and I, I prophesy this, I prophesied it before, I'm going to say it again. This is kingdom building here, kingdom advancement class here. Uh, Groups of leaders in churches and pastors that are be have beautiful spirits, beautiful minds, beautiful hearts, beautiful attitudes. Come on. Positive, friendly, loving, compassionate, genuine, loyal, loyal, reliable. Ooh, those are big keywords that most people don't even have. Integrity. Oh, here's one. Loyalty. Oh. Reliability. Oh. Are you kidding me? And they're teaching the word and they're raising up students and they're raising up people to understand the laws of the kingdom and the laws of success, the laws of finance, biblical economics, faith, you know, the preaching of doctrine, the teaching of doctrine and their people are full of the word and in their own lives they're producing the miraculous. Hasn't happened. Let me tell you, dot com, dot org, dot tv, dot cc, dot net. It hasn't happened. Many yahoos, my friend of evangelist in, 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 in one in Kenya says, sideshows and circus acts and all kinds of stuff people do. That, that's like the ministry, or it's a business for somebody. You, you may not like it. I don't know how much I like it either, but honestly. But Paul Kagami, who was just in Kenya at the inauguration, the president of Rwanda, he proudly said, he had a very uh, angry look on his face when he said, he's a very skinny guy, but his face, his eyes were bulging and all that. He says, he's incensed that the, the church's religion being a business, whatever, and he says he closed over 6,000 churches in Rwanda and uh, over 1,000 th mosques or whatever. Because the, the, the leaders there didn't have proper degrees, they didn't have proper training. And he, and he made a very, little, sound a little bit cute or a little bit arrogant, but a very strong statement. He said, uh, well, I don't want to use the word arrogant, pin it to him, I don't want to do that, but I don't know, it sounded like, he says, Rwanda is a blessed nation. Well, be careful how you say that, because God does want to bless Rwanda more. It's not just a blessed nation all the way. That's why God uses people in the ministry. So he needs to understand that a little more. I could, if I ever get to talk to him again, I'll, I'll bring it up as a point of uh, discussion. Not contention, maybe, but discussion, discussion. Friendly discussion, but <clears throat> truthful discussion. So, but it's kind of a good thing because people do need to be learned. They do need to rightly divide the word of truth and have uh, something to really teach the people from God that the people can be edified and built up. Can I, can I help you with something? Ephesians 4.11 says, God gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and pastors and teachers for the work of the ministry, for the edification of the body of Christ, for the perfecting of the saints, that they no longer be like children tossed to and fro with every wind of supposed doctrine or revelation or whatever man wants to do. But they'll grow up in the fullness and the stature of Christ and be powerful kingdom agents, kingdom operatives, successful business people, successful ministries, successful in career, successful in everything they're doing. 
because they, they're, they're, their foundation is the word of God. So that's the purpose of God giving these ministry gifts to, to bless people and to teach people. And that one needs to be approved. Study to show yourself approved, God said. Rightly divide the word of truth. Teachers have a greater accountability because what you're teaching has to be right. And you should be a student. You should be studying. You should be reading and listening and learning and knowing a lot, a lot of scripture, a lot about doctrine, a lot about the mind of God. You should be hearing, praying and hearing from God. A, pro a prophet, it's almost, I, I gotta say something a little bit funny. Prophet, it's almost easy somehow, a little easier. Because well, like myself, I'm always hearing from God. By the grace of God, he's put this grace upon my life. It's a very expensive anointing. I mean, you can't buy it or get it anywhere. I mean, when God gives it to you, you have so much to walk through and walk out. I mean, but I'm always hearing and seeing and knowing. But I'm always studying and listening. I've been doing it all, all my Christian life. Every single day. Every single day. And I still feel like Paul. I have that sentiment when he said, I don't count myself to yet have apprehended, but I press on to the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Upward, upward, more, more, more. Paul said, I, I thank God I speak in tongues more than you all. At least he was doing that. Jude 20, the little book of Jude, one chapter before Revelation in the 20th verses. You build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Most holy means it's a measurable thing. If it's just holy, one size fits all, nobody can attain anymore. But most holy, not just holy. You ever think about that? Your most holy faith, not just holy. Holy thing, it's just like there. Most holy. Meaning there's, hot, there's more to attain. Let us have it. And all these carnal, idiotic, Situations that people have, have, have themselves in. Unreliable, unintegritous, unfaithful, unloyal, disloyal, dishonorable, dishonoring, self-serving, uncaring. There's so much of that going on in the societies. And even in the church, and it shouldn't be named there. Jesus said, you'll know my disciples because they have loved love one for another. And John 8, 31 You'll know my disciples by the fact that they're continuing in my word. And the truth will come to you and the truth will make you free. So get delivered and purpose in your heart that I'm going to be a loyal, reliable, honest, integrity, zealous, passionate, realizing, having the realization that I have to expect God to do everything he wants done through me even. And the manifestation of it all has to happen in Jesus name. Say amen. So I love how the Lord has me teaching on success principles. Then I get into the thing I'm speaking as a prophet to the church also. Because the breakthrough needs to happen. Can you say amen? So I say this by realization, expectation that I have. Realization that I have and manifestation that I am receiving. That I have received in some ways, many ways, but there's more that's about to transpire and come forth. That everything that God wants to build and have and do and wants us to do and build and have. And what he wants us to say, what he wants us to be, what he, where he wants us to be, what he wants us to be doing. The Lord It's going to help if you manifest it partially with our cooperation. Very much with our cooperation. Desire, pushing things through, expecting it to happen. I did a whole multi volume series called The Platform. And uh, the Lord was speaking about the platform he wants to build. This, and then he spoke about this before in another message. Realization and manifestation is very important. Realization and manifestation. Realization of a thing and manifestation of it. 
And if you haven't gotten there yet, you haven't lived. The life that God wants you to have. I don't care what you've already achieved. You can't just park where you are and say, well, God understands, you know, my lot where I am, what happened, or where, where. There's no excuse like that. Get that all out of your head, out of your speech. And say, God, we have to build the big thing for you. The high calling, the high road. We have to rebuild the broken walls like Nehemiah did, you know. We have to deliver the children of Israel. The, the people out of bondage and slavery, like Moses did. We have to build, as a father, nations of, to, to even become like Abraham did. We have to be the warrior to build up a great kingdom like David did, and then build the great things that exemplified the glory of God like Solomon did, and cut down the prophets of Baal and kill the Jezebel, like uh, by his word as Elijah did, come on, and build up the churches like Paul the Apostle did, and have Jesus speak to the seven churches like through John the Beloved, John the Apostle, the Elder John, like he did on the Isle of Patmos, and Jesus came and spoke to the churches, what, what was wrong with them, and what was good about them, what was wrong with them, what, how much he wanted to yet do, you know? Kingdom exploits to advance things. Manifestation of it. Can you say amen? Manifestation of riches and, and blessings for you. You know, I, I, I pray you get houses and lands and cars and wealth and treasures and money. I really do. But still after it all, we have to raise up people. Because people are the only thing that go on into the next life. All the resources you have won't go with you. But you need them in the now to... Work with now, and the more you have, the better. I'm the proponent of us and you having millions of dollars. Billions, if it can be so, to use for our life and for the advancing of the kingdom. Small money, even if you get blessed, let's say you get blessed with, I don't want to say numbers, a, a nice chunk, you know, really nice piece of money. I mean, it's big, you know. So that's just for a season. You'll go through that. But what about that next level that God keeps speaking about? Of great treasure, great wealth. We're contending for it. You know, the scripture talks about being a contender of the faith. Hebrews 10, 35 to 38 talks about, cast not away your confidence. Be strong in the Lord. He talked about manifestation, what your faith will do for you. Have faith, have desire. Desire will give you faith to, 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 to realize what you want and then go to God and say, hey, and with expectation you say, I must have it. And then the manifestation will come in Jesus' name. That's wonderful. Be blessed. I love you. And let uh, the Lord speak to you about what he'd like you to sow into this grace. To even receive the great things that I'm speaking about. And his treasures and his blessings and his empowerment for you to become extraordinarily successful. And to fulfill every dream that he's given you. To do his dream and the dreams he's given you. Let them come to pass now in manifestation. That is his will. That's what must happen now. In Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Manton IV. The ways to communicate with me are in the links in the heading of the title. Do what God tells you to do. Love you. Be blessed. Lead people to Jesus. Tell them, just pray, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you as my Savior. I receive your gift of eternal life. Forgive me of everything wrong. I, I belong to you now by what I say. I'm signing up for the, the benefit package of eternal life. Thank you for the gift, Lord, I receive. Everyone has to do that. If you're going to be saved, you have to receive it. You have to say it. And always be talking to God saying, Lord, for the Lord to forgive you of anything. Anybody that wronged you, forgive them. Anything you felt that you might have done that wasn't right or something you were supposed to do that you didn't do. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Keep your records and accounts, your, your connection with him strong every day that there's nothing between you and him. You get it? 
We do that through prayer and confession and letting our heart be pour, always being pour, poured out to him. And he'll pour out more to us in Jesus' name, including his blessings and treasures. So be it in Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Manton IV. Love you much. Talk to you on the next one. Be blessed.